Okay, this is my 99 GMC Sierra 3500 with a Vortec 454 7.4 liter, I believe, in the French math. Um, I have a leak, a coolant leak, and you can see there's shiny. There we go. Shiny down there. It's, just, it's leaking. Not bad, but enough it should probably be addressed. Um, I don't know what's leaking. Uh, experience would say, you know, something, but I, I know I got to tear it down probably to that distance. Uh, I do have a problem with hot starts and foul injectors or foul fuel regulator. I think is the common problem so I, I got to take off the upper manifold anyway to get off the upper manifold I got to take off all this business and uh, I'm starting on the air conditioning I'm just I'm not like draining it just disconnecting it so belt um, you know I took off the intake you know this is just logical stuff just you know clamps and things like that um, you know, connectors, they, they only go in one spot. So, and, you know, they just kind of, you hook that up, they just rest there. So, some connectors down here, you, you know, so far pretty straightforward. Um, belt tensioner, I've never experienced one like this. Um, you loosen it 13, where am I? 13 mil, you loosen that off and then that just loosens the tension and then you can put your 3 8 uh, drive in there to uh, take the tension off but I mean that it's uh, just your hand can move it right now so Loosen off the belt, take that off. I'll try to bring you along on this. I haven't seen a really great video of this. So hopefully uh, I can get some light in here and get you looking at the problems. And if I come across anything, any hiccups, I'll pick up my camera and take the pictures. But air conditioner, just going to set it aside, not draining it. And... Uh, it's a mix of metric and French and British sizes. So quite a mess. So these are 13 mil, uh, 13. Looks like anything on the engine is 13 is metric and uh, accessories around it are uh, Imperial. Okay, so air conditioner's out of the way. It just, uh, I just flopped it over. It's not pinching on anything. Um, wiring harness is mostly loose. I didn't disconnect it from down there. I mean, I can go under the, and see what's holding it up, but hopefully I won't have to, I didn't didn't disconnect it from this side either so it's just kind of loosely back there uh, upper intake is, is loose so eight bolts uh, all are pretty accessible came loose uh, I'm all pretty accessible I took as much off as I could. Um, just push this wiring harness back. This massive thing is still attached. I don't want to try to take it out. So I'm going to try to loosen it up, fold it over. Uh, there's still a bunch of stuff there at the back. Um, we'll see if I can get better access to it. But um, so far, so good. It's out and it's miserable. 
it's just kind of hanging on the <laughs> brake lines right now. It's still attached to that, I don't know what you'd call it, EGR tube. Um, it might be worth it, worth it to try to take it off if you can. I don't know. It's definitely miserable. And I ended up taking off, uh, I guess, the coil. It hangs off the back of the manifold. I don't know. Just unplug it all. It might have worked as well, but it seemed to be hanging up a bit there. So with enough fighting, it will come up. Uh, I was half hoping there would be coolant lines in the upper intake and I would see a leak, but no, my leak is still down lower. And, uh, geez, you know, it might be just coming from this alternator. Sometimes these bolts go into the water jacks and that's what leaks. But uh, I think I'm going to try taking this off now. I just kind of figured that out on the video here. So to take this off, see if that's where my leak is. Um, I don't really want to go down any further. Uh, I am going to take the fuel rail off, clean injectors, and look into what's kind of all uh, what's giving me my hot start issue it's flooding itself when you start it hot cold st starts beautiful let it sit for 20 minutes you gotta crank it forever so and you get the raw fuel smell so uh, oh I also drain the antifreeze um, just by dropping the lower hose it seemed to be the easiest. I, I couldn't find a drain on here anywhere. It might have been down on this side, but I couldn't get to it. And that seemed like the easiest solution, just drop the lower hose. And I think most that's what most people do. But uh, we'll get this alternator off and take it on. We're on day two. Um, I am going to take the lower intake off. I've started preparing. I've disconnected. I'm guessing this is the heater line. And uh, pretty straightforward. Just kind of push these two tabs in. I mean, it's harder than it sounds. You push the two tabs in and it just pulls out of there. Uh, I took the plug wires off. Uh, I numbered them. It's a little bit of ink. Or a paint pen and I want to take off the distributor let's see yeah I won't get a light Hang on. So I'll show this light. I'm gonna take off the distributor I, I don't at this point I don't know if we have to but Get in here. <sighs> That's holding the distributor down. Uh, 9 sixteenths. Of course, it's a mix of metric and imperial. Um, just so I can have better access to disconnect the fuel rail. Again, I don't know if this is necessary, but I'm uh, just making life easier for myself. I mean, it's going to be tough to get in that distributor out, but it is possible and then I can look and see and I'll tell you if it was necessary to take the distributor out okay the lower intake is ready to come out uh, definitely 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 needed to take out the distributor because wait a minute yeah, it's going through the upper manifold, or the lower manifold. So two bolts back here, one, and oh, can't see it over there, but there'll be another one. Um, I'm guessing this is the fuel pressure regulator. Looks like it's vacuum operated. Uh, there's two lines, or there's a line going into it, and you can see the other return below it. Um, I, 
disconnected this and again this is all going to come out with it I hope um, yeah and you I mean you'll have to take the distributor out to get at those fuel lines and they just come out with a 5 8 wrench and it actually wasn't that hard I mean, it's hard getting the wrench on there but you just break them loose and then they, they, they came off like instantly so they came out there they they you know they were loosened instantly so uh, next, well, hopefully this will be. So yes, there is steady one bolt under that fuel thing, regulator pressure thing. So uh, I just bent it out of the way. Hopefully that's okay. Undo it, and uh, she should come. Thought I'd show you the rig I was using. <laughs> I'm using this ratcheting breaker bar to get a, a, a lot of these things. And uh, I don't know if it's recommended, but it's working for me. Otherwise, I have this thing going on here just to get up, put my knee on the rad support. Try not to put it through. I guess that's the rad condenser, but um, yeah. So just thought I'd share that with you. Well, I figure you're gonna want to see this. You're on a shaky tripod. Oh, ah. One take. Grab her by the fuel rail. Oh, why not? This air conditioner thing's in my way a bit. But uh, it should come out. Wiring harness is in my way. Of course. Why make it easy? <sighs> Woo! Tons of dirt getting in there. Ah, I think. Oh, can you see this? Pointing. Sludge. Sludgy. So oil mixed with coolant. Maybe a bit was getting by. Oh, look at this. Where am I? Oh. This here. Ah. So probably a good thing. Seen some sludgy. Ooh. Seeing some cheese at the back. I'm gonna bring you guys back there. Cheese. So, a little bit of work to be done. Probably a good thing. But, uh, step two reassemble. Got her all cleaned up. Um, Mostly used uh, Varsol or paint thinner and a scouring pad and just went to town on it carefully. There's a little uh, tea tray here that just pops out. Uh, I recommend popping it out because there, there was debris that fell down in there. So just getting it all, you know, getting it all cleaned up. And then uh, my intake. Uh, injector rail is off, clips just pop off, a couple of little 5 16 bolts, comes right off, pretty straightforward. Um, clean this up. I use a water-soluble brand of cleaner, just kind of, you know, soap, detergent, and water, and pressure washer, and clean it up, and uh, almost worked more effectively, it just you can't use that. You know, when the engine's still in the truck. And I got her pretty shiny. Uh, hopefully it's good enough. Stay. And things like that. Um, I should have grabbed the fuel rail, but here it is. That's your fuel pressure regulator. It looks like a C-clamp. 
in there. Uh, uh, C-clamp. Uh, I'm not going to take it out until I see the new parts, just to see how uh, it goes in. But, um, halfway expensive for such a small part, for me anyway. But uh, I guess that's it's a problematic thing. I'm cleaning my... O-rings are still in there. Cleaning my ejectors with a secret sauce. Um, I may be ruining them, or I may be cleaning them, or nothing. But I just, uh, fuel injector cleaner and transmission fluid, so. I'm sure someone's going yikes. But, uh, hopefully that works out. I don't, I'm not going to buy new injectors. Man, it sounded expensive. You know, just justifying any expense on an older truck. It's, uh, if you really like the truck, it's good, but it didn't run that bad. It just didn't, you know, hot start. So, uh, parts are on order, cleaned up. Um, I'm going to let the injectors clean or soak overnight. I may wake up and there's nothing left of them. But we'll see. And then we'll start some assembly the next day. I wanted to show you the intake manifold gaskets. And you can see here, yeah, looky, looky. So that part is somewhere in the cooling system right now. And same on the other side, both really gotta wonder if it's over tightened but there's a washer uh, of sorts in in the gasket it's, you know and ooh, I mean they failed in both spots the back are blocked off that's why they were so the back uh, I can show you on the intake but the backs are blocked off so you know even if they I mean they're starting to break out but there's nowhere to go, really. Um, but, yeah, that's... It's definitely the fail point. So... Yeah. Presuming these are stock. It's not looking great there, either. It's not looking... You know, but maybe that happened when I took it out. But, uh, <laughs> but uh... I don't know, kind of brittle, but I thought you'd be interested in that. So I'm uh, putting it back together. Um, skipped a few things. I really couldn't video it for you, but um, I put silicone down in the valley or on the block, just paying attention to the corners where the head and the block meet. Um, uh, manifold only go on one way, so not manifold. Gaskets only go on one way, so it, you know you really can't screw that up. So I mean, I didn't show you. Um, put it in, torqued it down, 12 volts. Uh, torque specs are online. Don't believe me or anyone on YouTube. Just find them yourself. Uh, then I hooked up the fuel lines. So you're seeing, that's the fuel pressure regulator. And yeah, it's just a C-clip. Again, I didn't show you, but man, it's just so straightforward. C-clip, I put a new vacuum line on, just goes to the manifold. And then here's your fuel line, top one. And there's a bottom one, you kind of see there. And they're buggers to get on, but it's the only way. And uh, one bolt holding this system down. And then the distributor, I got a new, I got a new cap and rotor. Um, there's timing, there's a timing guide online. Just Google it, timing of Vortec 454. Uh, you set, 
I mean, follow it along. It, it's more than I can explain in, in this video. And uh, I, at this point, I don't even know if I got it right. I mean, it's the first time I'm doing it. So if I did get it right, uh, I'll let you guys know. See, there's a little line I'm lined up, and uh, cylinder one, both valves are closed, and that's lined up. So I will hope that it means I'm at top dead center on cylinder one. Things are moving on. Got the upper intake on, and what a bugger! Oh my goodness. Um, I'm really starting to regret not removing this or taking more effort to remove this. Uh, I mean, uh, I got a pretty good kink in it. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that might be the way to go try, you know, really try to remove that I don't know, EGR pipe thing. <sighs> would have made a, I think it would have made a lot of things easier. But upper intake is on. It is a. It was a bugger getting the gasket aligned and dealing with that pipe and this and that. Um, throttle body's on. I cleaned it up. Uh, uh, throttle cable cruise is hooked up. Uh, things are moving. Um, this hose here. I should have showed you what I I, I had. This is what. This is what came off, and it, I think they just kinked a uh, 5 8 hose, 3 quarter inch hose, I'm not sure. But you can see the, the cracking that it makes. So, it's not the hose meant for it, but they have a hose with a 45 already built into it, and I think it's a lot better fit, and it's not kinking it. Uh, super tough to get on. I I put some silicone paste, like brake lubricant style of stuff, kind of lubed up the two connectors and just twisted it on there. But uh, that was pretty rough as well. Every, everything else, the wiring harness is starting to go back in, and you know it, it just it just lays where it was. And the connectors are all kind of one size, or they they're only go in one place, so they're all pretty unique. So uh, a GM at least provided that it's kind of a no-brainer to hook up. So uh, we'll keep moving along. Okay, a little further along, air conditioning's on, wiring harness done up alternator just starting to put the fan on uh road of the belt tension the pulley uh hopefully it's good it's just kind of kind of a strange way to tension it but it's just you just tighten up the the bolt things are going well um this guy here this is a heater hose a little quick connect for the heater hole. I don't know why they use it, but I went to hook it up, and the inside of it is just brittle plastic, just crumbled apart in my hand. So I don't know if this is an indication of how the truck, the rest of the truck is, but I had to get a new one. And the part, but the part store had, I just, I just brought it in, they knew right away what it was. So uh, this is hopefully it's good. And again, it's just a quick connect goes in there. So it's something else I had to buy. Um, yeah. yeah, so far so good. Getting close to starting it. Okay, pro tip number 37. Don't put the air conditioning compressor on before you put the upper rad hose on. It. I've been fighting this with this for quite a while so I gotta take off the compressor to put on the hose. Hose first, compressor second. So things have happened. I uh, got her all together, it runs but it's got a terrible vacuum leak. I, I messed something up. 
I'm pretty sure it's with the upper intake because I had I mean I had a ton of trouble getting it back on and I am taking off the EGR pipe uh, it's a bugger um, I, I use two wrenches and I bang bang beat it pretty hard don't miss though because your whole brake system is over here so I'm in the process of oh, and you can see now that it's broken loose it's coming off but uh, penetrating oil uh, let it sit overnight heat oh yeah I use heat torch whoa torch almost lost my nuts mostly bolts and uh, yeah it comes off so go back step one do this first <laughs> and then everything else will come off and man it'll make life a lot easier it, it, this is a pain but it's uh, it ultimately it was a lot less work than trying to mess and bend this hose and kink the crap out of it and everything else um, yeah all right let's see if I can sum this video up truck is running and everything's good I'm happy um, it's windy today so hopefully that's not coming through I may have to voice over this so just taking my time but highlight points um, as I said everything's good uh, it's a sunny day too so my light balance is gonna be really out of whack but the highlight points are it doesn't leak and it starts great hot start is perfect it fixed it whatever I did fixed it so you're ch changing that fuel pressure regulator doodad um, must have fixed it expensive but you know I think worth it and it's not leaking no antifreeze so far um, I definitely made some mistakes on this I'll share with you hopefully this video will save you but um, distributor uh, I messed up I think I got it off a tooth so super double check that triple check um, and my upper intake um, I didn't take off the EGR pipe I think that's called where are you kind of in the center of the frame there I didn't remove that EGR pipe maybe this hole no yeah and it, it messed up how you know it made work a lot harder and I didn't uh, properly clean the gasket off the underside which I couldn't see and it made a vacuum leak so I had to take it all off again which I mean I knew how it wasn't that big a deal but uh, it's it just it just made double the work so I mean it's working good now no issues things like that um, another takeaway is make yourself comfortable I have this cow catcher on the front of my truck and I didn't look at how it removed but you know it might have been worth removing it because that extra you know and it makes you know three four inches I, I probably could have used and uh, get yourself comfortable like get a, a foam a mattress a, a foam surfboard something lay it across here and make yourself uncomfortable because you're going to be laying on this engine for a long time so th that's a takeaway I'll give uh, clear codes at the end clear you know I, I had a, a timing code I uh, cleared it set the distributor uh, it kept coming back so I just moved the distributor slightly cleared the code hasn't come back yet so you save yourself having to send it in to get time but truck hasn't been start all all morning so I'm gonna set you up down here
coming good. with it. Dirty, but it's a truck. All right. Time to edit. Thanks for watching. We'll go for a ride. Still a little cold. Look at the, it is windy today. I'm gonna see about getting the tires rotated. guys say don't bring any tires in the showroom 